This is Dr. Noman Siddiqui, and I'm going to be demonstrating the minimally invasive surgical method for correcting hammer digit deformity. With the minimally invasive surgical approach, I utilize a interspace incision, and through this incision, I'm able to correct the whole deformity. At this level is usually the IP joint, and at that point is where my incision will be made. I make a stab incision through the skin, and I confirm that on CRM fluoroscopy. I'll bluntly dissect straight to bone, and I'll elevate the extensor tendon and the capsular tissues at this level. At this stage, the burr is inserted within the joint. Now, the goal is to be midline. You're not trying to start dorsal and work down. I start right in the center of the joint and then work the burr up and down. This is a two by eight millimeter burr. You can see our incision is very small. It's right there and I put my burr right into the center point or midpoint of the incision. I make sure I'm palpating for the dorsum of the extensor tendon. Once the burr is in the central aspect of the bone, I utilize controlled plantar and dorsal translation maneuvers to prep the articular surfaces on both ends of the bone. I apply proximal pressure to prep the proximal phalanx and distal pressure to prep the middle phalanx. As you can see, the burr is within the intraarticular space, and I've denuded the visual cartilage that is usually observed on C arm. The next step is to place our guide wire. I initiate that by creating a stab incision. I'm going to create a pilot hole in the distal phalanx, so it's easier to place my guide wire through the distal phalanx into the middle phalanx. At this point, you can see the guide wire is centralized, and now you just have to traverse the IP joint in the proximal phalanx. It's important to stabilize the IP joint when you're advancing this wire. You'll know that you're centralized when you hit the base of the phalanx, and you'll feel it as your guide wire is inserted. The next step is to check a lateral view to make sure you are midline. At this stage, you can drill over the guide wire. I tend to place an 18 to 22 millimeter screw. Uh, the common error is to make the screw too long, so it is important to be mindful that the, the screw does not engage beyond the isthmus of the proximal phalanx. This is a size 24 screw. You can see it's a longer second digit, and those are the features I look for that I'm going to have the head of the screw somewhere in the mid shaft of the middle phalanx and the distal tip of the screw engaging near the isthmus of the proximal phalanx to not only achieve compression, but if needed for removal, it's easy to retrieve. The screw is inserted on power and it is important to stabilize the IP joint while it's being inserted. Image intensification is done at this point to make sure the screw is in the appropriate location. You can see I've achieved excellent compression across the IP joint. I've maintained alignment and I've placed the screw in the location I was aiming for. I confirm on a lateral view and I remove the wire. You can see our interspace incision is very cosmetic and it's typically closed with one 4-0 monocryl stitch and I close the distal incision as well with one 4-0 stitch. The patient is made immediately weight-bearing in a post-op shoe. They're okay to remove their dressings within two to three days in shower, and I allow them into a comfort sneaker at 10 to 14 days. Impact activities are typically allowed at six weeks.